collection piece, which could be wiped clean here, is a European um, piece of pottery that is slip trailed. And somebody from the guild here forwarded a really nice video on YouTube where a gentleman threw a, a picture and did some slip trailing on it. Who forwarded that? Because that was just the most been brilliant. Here. I know, I sent it to my students. It was so the most brilliant yeah. YouTube video, and I'll that try is. to forward it on. And um, I would be, um, I, I have to say, it was very inspirational. And so I am not to the point where I can do that on a three-dimensional piece yet, but I can do it on a plate. So these were my first attempts at this technique. And I don't think it's too bad for a beginning technique. And I was also inspired by the um, Ceramics Monthly had an article on slip trailing. This is September, this past September. Um, you might have this, this edition. And there's a really nice article on slip inlay in this. Um, that also got me thinking about slips. So it was coming at me from a few different places and um, I needed to figure out a new theme for the semester at my school. So slips was the theme. So we've been playing around and I'm going to first show you um, how to mix some slips and these were some of the slips using the technique that's in the book there. And um, I use the magic bullet because I find it's really fast and easy. And thanks to Amanda and Doug Peltzman, is that um, he? She gave me the uh, percentage of oxides to put into the slip. <coughs> so we use about a cup of slip and 40 grams of mason stains. And if I'm using oxides, like my glue is actually cobalt. And I do use probably about 4 or 5% cobalt. Um, this is just white slip. This is a slip called fish sauce. Many of you are probably already familiar with it. Um, if you are not, I can post the recipe for it. Yeah, that would be great. That would be it wonderful. would be, Thank you. I would be happy to do that. So I've got about a cup, and I did bring some just so you could see the ease that the magic bullet, this magic bullet used to make smoothies in my house and then it, um, it comes when you buy it with a couple of different blades and the blade that I like to make smoothies with eventually wore out. So we bought a new magic bullet and so this one became the studio magic bullet with the alternate blade. <laughs> Lou, are you going to help me? The immersion oh, blender yeah. does work very well too. Um, I I like the immersion blender very much, but it? I like the magic bullet better. Do you put 40 grams of color in that? 40 grams of mason stain. In this case, it's gunmetal gray to a cup of slip. And then we're going to make some noise here. <laughs> come up with the technique of giving it a shake. And I usually would probably do it for a little longer, but um, you, using this technique, uh, you don't need to sieve it which I find to be a great advantage. Um, so while I have it in the little cup, and these cups from Magic Bullet also come with little lids, so um, I mix up also my spoos that way, the vinegar, uh, toilet paper, clay, and sugar that I use sure. to, to Ooh, Can blend. you post that recipe? Mm -hmm. What are you using that for? That's Martha Grover's recipe. You Ooh, have to I check it. Sugar? She didn't use sugar in it. She didn't use sugar? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. okay. That's from me. No. Sometimes I put sugar in it. <laughs> what, is what is that for? Super That's slip. To, to join, uh, oh, to join. Porcelain. 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 Yeah. porcelain glue. Yeah. 
So I'm What's filling up on small oh, it's it's sticky. paper rock face. It was? It's sticky. I would imagine. It helps the paper right down. How much do you put in bacteria? Uh, packet. Two. A whole pack? Packet. A thing like this. Yeah. 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 You, you put in uh, three pieces, three squares of toilet paper, unless you use the really fluffy stuff, right. which you probably do. I do. But I do. <laughs> <laughs> So these are little squeeze bottles from Ceramic Supply Store. Of course, you, you can find all kinds of different squeeze bottles, including uh, hair dye. Um, I like this one quite well, but some people don't like to have to push on it. But And, and these work good, too. Uh, this one is I just filled with water. It's a little stained from some iron that was in it at one point, but it's just water. And whatever you choose, you just need to kind of get used to whatever it is that you choose. Because you want it to come out in a nice line, not too thick, not too thin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So whatever you choose is, is just what you choose. I find that some of them are too large. These are nice because you can cut the tips yourself and they're only about a dollar and a half. Um, this I use for the white slip to put on as a base. Um, before I do the spinning plates, I'll show you the, uh, the technique where we just did a flat slab. These were made with flat slabs, running the slip on. So, there's my wire. Slab going here. Okay. I'm just going to cut the ends off so it's not hanging over. And in order to get the colors to run, now the colors I have are the blue, that's with the cobalt. This is white, just like what's in here. I have a sea green mason stain the gray mason stain, black, uh, which is also a stain, and yellow, which is a uh, vanadium yellow. And, hmm, did I put a brush in? I may have to borrow a large brush, Brian. I thought I had thrown it in, and I must have pulled it back out. I'm so sorry. Do you have a wide brush? Yeah. Could you use a white slip, like on brown clay? You can use a colored slip, too. I just use the white as my base. Um, but uh, I think I did... Well, it's not here. I tried. Uh, this is fine. Thank you so much. Um, I'll wet it, but I don't want it to be too too wet. I just want to put down a nice layer of the white slip so that the colored slips that I put on top of it have something to move on. So I want that to be thick enough to, and you can paint it on. I just found that um, I started putting in the squeeze bottle when I started doing it on the wheel for ease of application. What temperature are you firing? I'm firing to cone six. Mm -hmm. So there's a cone six clear glaze on over that. And this is all porcelain? No, that's all white, white stoneware. You move I am cone using six. white stoneware with this. I have not tried it with porcelain because in my mind's eye, um, porcelain is may not 
work with the slips as well, but you'd have to try it. So if you have a little issue with, I haven't used this one for a couple of days, so it might need a little unclogging. And generally, where is my newspaper? I will squeeze it onto the newspaper again to This is starting to dry, so I got to work fast. So you're going to see when you start to add so it starts spreading out, and then the, the dots will start to interact with each other. So you can create a pattern that's kind of a honeycomb pattern just by applying dots of slip, and that's what I did on that one piece. Where you have the squares. This one? Mm hmm. So you can see they start to interact with each other. And then if you want those rings to appear to be more um, like donuts than dots, and I don't want this to run yet. It's on the. Yeah. They do kind of clog up. So I'll put, this is white, so it'll appear the same color as the background. These are starting to kind of infiltrate each other. It is kind of fun. White slip would cover a buff, um, buff clay bottom? Yeah. I certainly do. Well, it would good. cover any, wouldn't it? I mean, dark clay bottom. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's better on the white. Sometimes I found, like, I did one brown clay I think that, that it has little, like, this, so, I don't know what causes the brown flecks, and sometimes that will come through in a slip. Am I going to use mm -hmm. flex? Um, in the article, the Ceramics Monthly article, she's using a dark clay body, and now this one's being a little stiffer, so we're going to see if it will lay down. I might bump it on the table a little bit to make it lay down before I distort it. <laughs> <laughs> and they say cats are... <laughs> 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 Yeah, All right, yeah. before I distort it, I'm going to pat it down. The yellow has gotten stiffer since the last time I bought it or used it. Um, and I want to tell you, I've also bought some slips. Oh, cool. So we're going to start. Yeah. So we're going to start They look like little eggs in the middle, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the clay has to be wet. yellow has gotten. I bought some deco slips at Ceramic Supply and I found that they are way too stiff even though I tried to thin them down. And this yellow is not running the way that I want it to today, so it's kind of staying in its little drops. This one's kind of kind of like that. Oh, yeah, it's very cool. Oh, isn't that neat? Beautiful. And you can play around with different patterns, um, and then usually I'll cut out a section of that and drape it into a slump mold, and that's how those two were made. Does the clay have to be wet? Um, the clay, it's helpful that the clay is wet, which is why I didn't throw the um, piece in advance. Mm -hmm. And uh, Oh, when you say wet, not super wet, suede, maybe? No, is it? I'd like it wet. And so right under yeah. this blowing heat thing, which is probably not so good uh, for this because my base coat of white slip, I think, had started to dry out. <coughs> which would my Somebody could lower the heat if you want us to. <coughs> oh, that's cool. That's okay. No, it's fine. <laughs> I like the heat, actually. So I'm just going to throw a small plate. I would recommend if you want to uh, try this, um, really work small at first because you have to work kind of fast and a pound and a half of clay 
can make plenty big of a test piece to get started and then you can make your 16 inch platter after that. When I'm building a uh, plate, whether it's a small one or a big one, I always tell my students, as you're opening up the plate, the plate's all about the bottom of the plate. It's all about the floor. You make the floor, 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 and oh, the rim is done. And then it's done. But it's all about the floor, and I also stress to them um, to open it up a little at a time and to open it up as a swimming pool, not a pond. This is a swimming pool because it has a wall. It's not a pond. It doesn't go like that. If, you're, if you don't have a vertical wall here, you can't push the clay open to make it move. And then don't open it up so much that you don't have a nice bit of clay at the edge because you want that nice wall. And you're going in a little bit on the bottom, right? What? You're going in a little bit on the bottom. I'm not, I'm trying not to actually. Okay. <laughs> but. You're not worried about it popping up where it'll affect I'm, what I you're doing. I haven't compressed it yet, so I'm going to kind of compress it towards the center. I like it as flat across as I can get it. And then I like to open up the sides, especially for this particular project, you really want um, it to be as flat as possible. So uh, I always make these ribs out of credit cards because I'm cheap. And I'm always teaching students who lose all their tools anyway, so. Hey. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> I, no, I'm talking about my college students. And Amanda, don't be offended. <laughs> it was a long time ago. <laughs> she didn't lose any toys. She was perfect. <laughs> so you want something that's kind of flat. And then we're going to go right in with the uh, white slip. I'm going to... Um, I'm going to use a different color on the inside, maybe yellow, since it's kind of thick and it's going to be hard to use it very much other than this. I'm going to use one color in the center. I studied this plate a lot to from? try to figure out, I don't know, does anyone know? Is it Hungary? Is it? Poland or Hungary. Probably. Yeah, they do that in Spain thinking. as well. Yeah, it's not um, It's not from yes. Spain. Okay. Oh, she's got. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. So I'm gonna put a. Um, I studied that a lot, and I kind of am beginning to figure out how they're doing it. Um, so I'm gonna lay some white slip here. has to stay pretty fluid while you're doing this process. Then if I can get one of these to take a contrasting color and I was going to use gray but I think you're going to see black a little better maybe maybe the black will show a little bit better I'm going to put eight little dots and you're going to see how they're going to spread the other clays yeah it is like smart. so these eight dots are right at the intersection of the yellow circle and the white circle add a little bit to that. And then I'm going to add some more dots. Um, and these, I could use white, actually. Maybe I'll use the gray if it's for a little while. I'll 
will make eight more dots up Whoa, here. See that. how they push? Mm -hmm. And already the outer green line is starting mm -hmm. to interact. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been trying different things like trailing brushes and this sort of cool tool that's sort of like a wide needle. So but really, it, it, I found that the little sewing needle seems to work the best. So the first ones, I'm going to start right at the dots, the black dots, and go right to the center. going through the slip and slightly into the clay itself so I can, you know, I have a little bit of, I'm not trying to be so delicate, I'm, you know, I want to definitely drag that through. <laughs> okay, so that's the uh, center motif. Now we'll, um, it will change a little as I spin. So I'm going to add some more lines out here. Let's just make sure it's flowing. You kind of get used to, there we go, the wheel speed and try to get your line going without too many interruptions. If I see that I have some like dots there from the specs, maybe I can come in and feature that to be part of the design. So here I'll go from the dot You do have to keep cleaning the, lead, the pin off or else you kind of drag the white slip back through the middle of your green dot. And then uh, I think what I'll do is I'll put another white dot <laughs> right in the middle of each one of those areas. And if you mess up, you know, you really can go back in and just touch it up. It's not too difficult. And this whole motif is, is based on symmetry, but I should imagine it could be very interesting results even as you say, it's not perfectly symmetrical or the lines and are the same. Yeah, so. there are mistakes, but your eye wants to correct them, so it's like mm -hmm. a tile pattern on a wall. You know, I tell people when they make tile, not every tile is actually identical. It just appears that they are because your eye corrects the, the pattern. <coughs> now, if I go in with a stiffer glaze, and my yellow is pretty stiff, but here's where that... that um, that glaze from ceramic supply, the deco slip, which is too thick to do this kind of work. And if you water it down, it doesn't work. If you put sodium silicate in it, maybe it will work. I haven't tried that yet. I'm thinking it might work. But um, I want to do some hearts, and I do have to take out this hair now because it's going to be in the way and possibly change the pattern. So I'll put some uh, dots. Let's see if I can do it while it's spinning. I'm not sure if I can. No, I can't. Okay, so I'm So this is working and not running too much because the glaze is a little stiffer. 
or the slip, I'm sorry. It's slip, it is not glaze. Amanda is playing around with trying this technique <coughs> on top of slip using um, stroke and coat glazes and having some certain success with that, which is kind of cool. So now, if I run this through here, I should get the hearts. Oh, like on the, mm -hmm. the, the original one? Yeah. That go around. Great. Some of them Beautiful. look a little more heart-like than mm -hmm. others. Yeah, sure. You get that idea. Sure. And then, you know, the more you go in, and we, we are now getting to the point where it's not so wet, but, you know, you, the more you add, the more it'll move in. The more okay. unga posh get gets. The more, more <laughs> unga posh. <laughs> <word again>. Right. <laughs> so, um, here they went in with a brown clay and then a white dot in the middle of the brown clay to push that down. So it gives you some fun stuff to do. It's cool. Thank you. Very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is, well, this is, you know, I always want to come up with new ideas to show my students. And so um, I was really inspired by that, that videotape and this one plate that I had. And I wanted to figure out how that plate was made. So, so uh, I'm a proud owner of a Deborah pot simply in that corner. Thank you. Oh, yeah. It's, it's so just pretty up there. It's so beautiful. I love it. Thank oh, you. Yeah. Very special. Yeah. What was the addition? It's on the cellophane. So I can't hold it. I can't hold it up too long because it'll right. move. <laughs> what was the ceramics monthly edition? Uh, September. That is September. September. Where is it? Sorry, yes. oh, yeah, it. September. And uh, I'll September. forward that recipe for fish it's sauce. Oh, good. Slip. Great. And I will also forward the, um, the again the link to the to the YouTube video mm -hmm. where a gentleman who's very proficient Wonderful. is doing it in three dimensions, and it's very very impressive. I'm working up to that. Is there a reason not to use the clay because you're working with porcelain? Is there a reason not to use porcelain? I think that if you use your own clay body uh, as your slip, it should makes a lot of sense. But it all depends on how much it moves because some slips will move. This does have some. Um, uh, some feldspar in it that makes it, it, it just, it moves nicely. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. This, yeah, I think the, so it, of course you don't know how necessarily it would interact with whatever anybody right? Well, fish sauce is almost like an on -go. It, it I have not found a clay body that doesn't fit. I can even put it on this one. So it's really critical content. It's, it's my go-to slip that I use at uh, Parsons School of Design. Then I got the art school at Old Church to start using it. And um, I've used it just because it's never failed. Yes. Yes. Wow. It's a no fail. The miracle fry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.